Welcome to IELTS Academy 9. I'm Yusr. And today we will learn how to write perfectly well-structured and well-developed body paragraphs for IELTS Writing Task 2 essay. But first, if you haven't watched my video on writing an essay introduction yet, please watch it to understand what should be written in the introduction that we develop in the body paragraphs. And I will leave you the link in the description box. In this lesson, we will learn the number of body paragraphs for IELTS Task 2 essay. The idea is to include in each body paragraph paragraph structure and developing ideas which includes writing topic sentences and support sentences, the use of transitions and linking words, and finally a practice time. So by the end of this video you will be able to write well-developed body paragraphs and writing an essay will be very easy for you. So let's get started. How many body paragraphs should I write? As I told you before, this is an academic essay that should have around four to five paragraphs, which means that you should write two to three body paragraphs. This is a sample essay, and I highlighted body paragraph one in yellow and body paragraph two in green. But you might ask, when should I write two body paragraphs or three body paragraphs? Actually, it depends on your thesis statement. And if you don't know what a thesis statement is, you should watch my last video on writing an introduction because the thesis statement is the last sentence you write in your introduction. The thesis statement should have the points that you are going to discuss in your body paragraphs. So if you have two points, you write them in two body paragraphs. And if you have three points, you write them in three body paragraphs. So again, the number of body paragraphs depends on your thesis statement. What ideas should I include in each body paragraph? As I told you, you should include the points you mention in the thesis statement and discuss them in detail. Let me show you how. This is an essay that supports the idea that husbands should share the household responsibilities with their wives. In the thesis statement that I highlighted in pink, we have two points. Let's read it together. The virtues of this arrangement will be shown by looking at the positive effects it has on both children and the relationship quality the married couple experiences. And this means that I have point one, which is the effect on children, and I must have it in body paragraph one. And the relationship quality the married couple experiences should be there in body paragraph two. And as you can see, body paragraph one begins with the same idea. For one, parents who share housework provide a good example to their children of the importance of empathy. So I know that this is the first point and that you are going to develop it and discuss it in detail. Body paragraph two. In addition to this, the relationship quality married couples experience can benefit from their sharing in challenges of day-to-day -day life. So I think this is well organized and easy to understand. The thesis statement and the points are going to be discussed in separate paragraphs. Now let's move to the next point. How can I structure my body paragraphs? In order to give a well-structured body paragraph, you should move as follows. You should start with a topic sentence followed by support sentences. The topic sentence is the very first sentence in each paragraph that has the main idea. And of course, as I told you, it has one of the points in the thesis statement. The support sentences are the sentences where you explain or prove the main idea. Because you cannot keep writing general ideas. If you support something, you cannot keep saying that it's beneficial, it's useful, it's good. No. You have to show why you support this idea through evidences. This could be details and explanation. You can explain the topic sentence. You can add examples to clarify and prove. And you can add personal experience, statistics, studies, and quotations by experts. So again, in each paragraph, you move as follows. One topic sentence followed by support sentences. Let me show you how in this essay. The question, some people think that the government should provide assistance to all kinds of artists, including painters, musicians, and poets. However, other people think that this is a waste of money. Discuss both views and give your opinion. So the question here shows that there are two different sides. Some who are with the idea that the government should financially support artists while the others are against and that you have to give your opinion in the end. 
And as you can see, the essay is out of four paragraphs. We have the introduction, two body paragraphs, and a conclusion. Let's read the introduction together in order to identify the thesis statement. An often debated topic is whether a government should provide its country's artists with assistance or not. Many believe such assistance is a prudent use of a nation's wealth and should thus be supported. However, others feel this kind of spending is wasteful. Both sides of the argument will be discussed in this essay before a conclusion is reached. And this is the thesis statement. In my introduction, I showed that there are two points of views. And in my thesis statement, I said that I'm going to discuss both views and then a conclusion will be reached where I'll state my stand or I'll express my point of view. The first body paragraph, of course, has the first side, which is with the idea. Let's read the topic sentence. According to many, government funding of the arts can benefit a country's cultural identity. From the very beginning, I show that there is a benefit behind the government financially supporting art, and this can benefit a country's cultural identity. Then I have to prove my point of view. Let's see how. These are my support sentences. I start with giving examples. A good example of this is the anime art culture of Japan. So I give an example of the anime art of Japan. After that, I have to keep explaining. Today, anime is a globally recognized art form and as such a huge draw for tourists. As this shows, providing government assistance to artists can have positive ramifications across different channels within a country. It's thus understandable why many people support this stand. So as you can see, the development is as follows. Giving an example and then showing how when the government supported this type of art, the country could attract more tourists. So it was ben beneficial for the country. So in this body paragraph, I give an example and then I explain how the idea of supporting artists help the country through this example. Let's move to body paragraph two, which has the opposite point of view. On the other hand, many argue this kind of spending is wasteful. From the very beginning, I state that this is something negative. Then I have to prove why it's negative. Let's read the support sentences. The core of this argument typically spotlights developing countries. So I'm giving an example with developing countries. How? I have to explain. People basically feel that among these countries, government money may perhaps best be used to solve social problems such as establishing safe drinking water and roads to rural communities. When looking at the discussion in this slide, the merits in not utilizing government funds on artists can be seen. So after I give an example of developing countries, I explain that it's more important for a country that the government spends money on infrastructure and developing roads and whatever other facilities uh, should be spent on. That's why it's not that good for the, for the country to spend money on artists. There are more important things, which is the counter argument or the opposite idea of body paragraph one. After that, in the conclusion, I, of course, give my opinion because I'm asked in the question to give my opinion, but my focus today is not the conclusion. We'll have it in next video. I'm just showing you how we should develop our body paragraphs. We begin with the topic sentence and then many support sentences, examples or statistics or studies, as I told you, or even personal experience. But there is another thing that you should learn will help you to develop your ideas easily. This is the use of transitions and linking words. Transitions and linking words are words and phrases that we use in order to connect ideas. And they are significant because they help you develop your ideas logically and make your piece of writing very smooth for the examiner to read. Some of the examples of transitions or linking words we should use firstly, secondly, thirdly, and finally when we give sequence of events and be careful finally is not for the conclusion finally is for the last reason or the last effect it's still in the body paragraphs in addition or moreover or furthermore when we add more information although despite however while and whereas when we have contrast or contradictory uh, ideas in sentences therefore thus consequently when we have 
result of something. On one hand, on the other hand, when we have two contradictory paragraphs, and they are very good to start your paragraph with. For instance, for example, as a clear example, of course, when we exemplify or give examples, to illustrate in other words, namely when we explain what the idea is about, when we want to add more explanation. Since, as, due to, because of, as a cause of, when we state reasons or causes of a problem or of, of something. To sum up, to conclude, in conclusion, to summarize, or in essence, of course, we use them when we conclude uh, our essay or in the conclusion paragraph. And this is in brief how your essay should look like after you use the transitions and linking words. And we are going to analyze this in the practice time. But I want you to see it as a whole. As you can see from the very beginning till the end, we have many transitions and linking words through the whole essay. But be careful not to overuse them. Make sure that you use them reasonably. That's all for the idea of developing your body paragraphs. Now it's the practice time. And now I'm going to analyze an essay with you in order to understand how it looks like and how we develop it. And then you can practice alone. Here there is a question. Some people think that physical punishment such as spanking should be banned as it harms children. To what extent do you agree or disagree? The first thing we do is we try to understand the topic very well and the questions given. Because this is what I'm going to handle in my essay. So here we have some people believe that physical punishment like spanking or slapping children should be banned because it's harmful. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So this is an agree or disagree essay. And this is my essay that we are going to analyze together. I wrote it in four paragraphs. The first paragraph is my introduction. Let's read it together. Physical or corporal punishment is defined as any act causing deliberate physical pain to a child in response to some undesired behavior. Although many parents and teachers believe in the effectiveness and necessity of physical punishment in behaving children, they ignore the detrimental impact on children's behavior. Therefore, even if physical punishment is still lawful in some countries, it should be banned at homes and schools since it generates violence and impacts educational outcomes. So my introduction is that I'm giving a general idea on the meaning of corporal or physical punishment, that it's any action or any act that causes deliberate pain to a child. And then I move to that, although some parents believe this is effective in educating or in behaving children, of course, this has detrimental, which means horrible effects on a child or a child's behavior, and therefore it should be banned. And of course, I state this in my thesis statement, which is the last sentence that begins with therefore. Therefore, even if physical punishment is still lawful in some countries, it should be banned. Here I answer the question, if I'm with banning or not, it should be banned at homes and schools since it generates violence and impacts educational outcomes. And I have two reasons for this. It generates violence, and this is the first point which should be discussed in the first paragraph, and it has impacts on educational outcomes which will be discussed in my second body paragraph. So let's see how the first body paragraph, the topic sentence, First, physical punishment is a type of a violent act and violence generates violence. Again, this is the first point that I stated in my thesis statement. And this is my topic sentence that I have to develop. Let's see how I'm going to develop this. The UNICEF has defined raising children by corporal punishment as violent discipline. Here I started with an example and this example is an example from the UNICEF, it could be a study, you can say, for example, a study by the UNICEF, but here I said the UNICEF has defined, give a definition of the idea of raising children by violence as a violent discipline. In other words, in other words here, because I'm going to explain, the obedience that a child shows to his or her parents results from a violent act of punishment. 
Unfortunately, when children are used to being smacked or spanked, they will not understand how to verbally express their feelings. On the contrary, they will act according to the way they are raised. When they are upset with someone, they will beat them. When they are disappointed at a person, they will not be able to express. When they get married, they will not be able to have a conversation, and when they have children, they will treat them the exact way they were treated. It's a vicious cycle of violence that will not end. So as you can see, I give an example, then I started explaining how, how violence generates violence. Children will grow up with this act of violence. They will not be able to express. They cannot handle a situation. They cannot have a conversation, and consequently, it's a vicious cycle. So as you can see in the first body paragraph, I used first because I'm introducing the topic. In other words, because I explain, unfortunately, when there is something which is not that good or something which is negative. And I use when also because I'm like uh, giving examples or situations. Then in the second pa body paragraph, another reason, this is my transition because here I'm giving another reason. Another reason is the impact of physical punishment on educational outcomes. My topic sentence is the effect of physical punishment on educational outcomes that I stated as the second point in the thesis statement. To illustrate, I'm going to explain. Teachers punish children physically as a sort of educating them. They think that because the punishment is painful, children will never repeat the mistakes and will behave themselves. However, children who are exposed to physical punishment lose self-esteem and most likely repeat the same mistakes. Here I'm explaining that physical punishment has very negative effect on children. Although parents and teachers think that it's useful for behaving a child, of course not because children who are exposed to phys physical punishment lose self-esteem and repeat the same mistakes. Then I have to support my explanation with an example. For instance, this means, for example, a study by the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights explains the consequences of corporal punishment on children and how it hinders the educational process. It states that the long-term consequences of physical punishment are disruptive behaviors in the classroom, vandalism, poor school achievement, poor attention span, increased dropout rate, school phobia, suicide and retaliation against teachers, and above all, scar the child forever. So as you can see here, I started explaining how this act of physical punishment is negative. I give an example by the Commission for Protection of Child Rights and how they identify the consequences of corporal punishment, and I give examples of these consequences. In the last paragraph, which is the conclusion, in conclusion, physical punishment is not an act of behaving a child, rather an act of abuse. The violent consequences of children's behavior and the disastrous educational outcomes require that every government should ban it in schools and homes. So, of course, the conclusion is a summary of what I have already stated in my essay, and it has to be related to the thesis statement. So I give a summary of the two points, and in the end, I emphasized my stand or my opinion that I'm with banning physical punishment. So I think this is clear on how to develop your essay. As I told you, the conclusion will be in next video. We will discuss how to write a conclusion in detail, because it's not only a summary. We can write a summary and we can call to action. So I'm going to show you uh, different styles of a conclusion. But my focus today is how to develop the body paragraphs. So now we understand how to write an introduction, how to write body paragraphs, and how to develop them, and how to use transitions and linking words. And please don't forget them. They are significant, and they will help you organize your essay and develop your ideas. And that's all for today. I hope that you find it easy and clear. Uh, I recommend that you watch my last video first on the introduction, and then this video, and immediately you start practicing writing essays. And if you have any questions, please leave me your comments. And thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to watch all my new videos.